Welcome gamers to Total Conflict Resistance. This is going to be a one-off video. This is actually still in beta. This game hasn't actually been re released yet. Um, I'm guessing it'll be released into early access. I think there's a lot of balancing thing that, that the devs need to do with the actual game itself, but it is damn good. God, it's a good, good game. Uh, it's a really amazing uh, mix of different types of uh, gaming genres. Uh, really at its heart, you've got a first-person shooter that you can then sort of zoom up to another level where you then be uh, playing essentially a, um, a strategy, a real-time strategy game as well. So you can sort of go in and play either way and probably both is the way that you would actually sort of end up playing the, the actual game itself. It's very, very, very well done. Uh, beyond that, you've then got a st whole strategic layer, which I'll go through in, in some depth in this video as well, to then sort of show you You've got like uh, you've got city um, expansions. You've got um, you've got trade systems. Uh, you've got diplomacy. Uh, there's all sorts of different aspects across it, and a whole lot of different factions you can play as well. A real lot to like about this game. I think this is going to be one of these games that when it hits, it's going to hit damn damn hard. And you're sort of getting a bit of an early early look at the game uh, through this particular video. So I hope you like it. The game has recently been updated. Uh, where there's been a lot of things actually added to the game. So we now actually have like a lot of systems. You can get a bit of a feel for what the game's going to bring when it does actually come. And as I say, this is going to be a very, very, very impressive game. Let's just go into a new game. I'm, I know I'm covering up the, the menu here. It just says continue, new game, quick battle. So you can play just a battle if you're wanting to. Uh, options or quit the desktop. I might quickly have a look at everything because this is really going to be an expose of the game, not so much a how to play it or I mean maybe a little bit, but really it's going to be so you guys can decide this is a game I want to be playing or not. Let's have a quick look at the options. This is quite impressive when you look at controls. I do quite like this actually. When you go to the key bindings, instead of it just having the list which it does have on the side through here, it also has something where it will actually go and, and highlight what it is that actually is active in the game. So you can see what's still available, what you can then go and change, and what things actually all do. So it's just a nice little way of doing things, including the fire button, the move camera, and the aim. There's a few little things in the game that I hope get changed over time. The game also has not really had a good balance um, pass in its development because it, so many things have just been added in recently and uh, but god it looks impressive it looks so impressive i'm just going to go back out from here and just going to start a new game um because you, you've got different different uh, uh different what is it languages <laughs> they're called languages you've got different languages down the bottom here that you can choose i don't know what the difference is between us and and uh uk because usually they're they're put together uh, I'm guessing maybe it's just the spelling, uh, because quite often the UK, which is what I use, I use a, a, like Australia defaults to the UK uh, mode of spelling rather than the lazy American with uh, dropping all their U's. So it should be colour with an O-U-R, not just O-R. <laughs> anyway, let's go into new game. Uh, so this is actually, this gives you a bit of a feel for the factions in the game. Now, there's factions that play with cities and, this, and, 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 and countries, and there's factions that start off as rebels. And so the whole bottom rung here are rebels that start off inside the countries that we see above. And so they are trying to rebel or to trying to sort of create like their own empire inside these actual countries. And so when you play as one of these, you end up with a quite a powerful faction. But you don't have a really good way of actually getting more and more equipment. So you need to be very careful how you then handle your battles. So um, yeah, you end up with a, like a lot of fighting fighting forces when you play as the rebels. When you play as one of the one of the top countries up through the top through here, the, either the democracies or the communism countries, uh, you end up with a lot of cities where you can sort of start to build different things and have infrastructure and do other different bits and pieces. Uh, and the rebels in that start are much much weaker so they're just literally like an entry level fight just to get you used to the game and then you're into the actual game itself we then fighting against different countries now you can see there through the top through here that the, the different factions that start with the countries are split between democracies and communism now this is mainly the weapon loadout particularly the vehicle loadouts as to what you can sort of expect to be able to build in the game. So if you start off as a democracy, you're going to have more of the US style um, equipment available to you, <clears throat> like the M1, M1 Abrahams tanks, Abrams tanks. Whereas with communism, you're going to start off with the Soviet bloc uh, type tanks and weaponry. So the game 
tends to, I think it, I'm not sure if the demo is still available, but you can play a demo of the game, which is probably worth having a look at as well if you're if you're on the fence about how to actually play the game. But the, like the the first the demo, I think only has like the first four that you can then go and play. Now they all have a difference about what they do, but they actually the the map is set in stone. And pretty much your start is set in stone as well. But then what you do with that is you can do anything you like. But there are a lot of different factions. So there's good re replay value in the game. And even if you only play the same faction over and over and over, I think you'll find that the replay value is there. The forces tend to be randomized a little bit, I've noticed. So that sometimes there'll be a, you know, there might be seven uh, forces inside a, a rebel army. Other times it'll be down as low as four. So depending on what you play as. Sambro Democracy, I think, is your vanilla default start in the game. You start off with four cities. Uh, if you go to the Malaga Democracy, you start off with three. So it's a harder start. If you start off, for example, with the Hollisbro Democracy, you start off with about seven or six or seven cities. And so it's an easier start. So you've got different ways of actually playing the game, depending on how you want to actually go and play it. Uh, I'll start with the Sambro Democracy because that is the vanilla start. So why not? <laughs> so we'll have a bit of a look and see what this one does. By the way, if you've, if you've watched video is maybe older than a month or so. Um, what you're going to find is that there's so much more in the game now than what there was previously. And so even though I'm playing a faction that you're probably used to seeing, uh, in, if, you are, if you have been watching these, the actual mechanics of the game have changed dramatically. And so I do want to sort of show that. And I'm going to use this faction as a, as a way of highlighting that rather than going somewhere else. I think I'll just start off, off in through here. So we'll load her in, and it will then sort of it automatically kicks me into a um, into the Steam area where it just goes through and it gives me a, a basically how to survive uh, Cam Cambridia uh, 101. And so this is actually a, a a fairly fairly interesting like it's worth a read actually have a read through this one here. It just sort of sets up how you can do things, but I'll explain pretty much what they are in this episode. So anyway, we're just going to go Shift Tab, and then they they, they then leave the. Uh, the arena for us. We don't have to worry about them. Uh, and so we start off on the 1st of January 2024 at uh, basically 12 o'clock, so at, at midday. Now, I'll put, there's a few things in the game that do need to be changed. And this is a beta, so there's going to be there's going to be things. There's going to be a lot of things that will change over time. One thing is you can't look down on the map, so you've got no way of actually sort of tilting your camera. And I think it needs that both in in the strategic map, which is what we're looking at, but also primarily in the actual combat map uh, where you really do need to have that sort of access. Um, other things, it also will unpause itself uh, at different times where I wish it would sort of honour the pause a little bit. These are minor things. <laughs> These are minor complaints uh, overall. So let's have a bit of a look at the... Um, I'm just trying to think of what's the best way of showing the game. I mean, the, the, the fun part of the game, the big, big part of the game is the actual battle system, and I'll, I'll get to that eventually. So I'll actually cover everything else and then get to the battle system. So if you want to skip past that, because I know a lot of you will be here, here to just play the a first-person shooter-type game and really want to have a look at that aspect. But I'm thinking if I at least cover all these other bits and pieces now, at least I've caught and covered it, I can then finish this this one off with the actual battle itself. And I'll, I'll just be battling against the uh, against the rebels. So if I sort of zoom out, again, it sort of zooms straight up. This is where I wish it would tilt down more and, and have the ability to actually be able to tilt down. If I use the WASD keys, I can then move back. And so our country is this blue border in through here. And so we've got a fog of war. We can see the full next country next to us, which has only got three cities in it. And uh, and then over on our side, we should have a rebel force somewhere in our in our territory. And oh, there it is, seven. Yeah. So this is randomised a little bit. I'll I'll talk about what this actually means and how this all sort of then works as well, because the forces are randomised, which is great because that's that's our procedural generation. Uh, so we've got four cities actually in our in our territory. You'll also see that there's uh, four, four different battalions, one in each of the actual cities itself. I'll talk a bit about the different cities. I'll just do an overview of, of what the game has actually got. This is a strategic layer. This is not where most of the game is played, but this is an important part of the game because you've got all sorts of different things you can do in this particular phase of, of the actual, of what you can sort of see 
in this, uh, I guess it's the, like the meta game, uh, it, which really is the game in between when you go in to fight your actual battles. So it's a little bit like Mountain Blade in that sense. It's, it's sort of like a, a combination of Mountain Blade or Bannerlord. Um, it's, it, it, it's set in a, in a modern era. It's very much like a, a game called Freeman, if you ever played that game. Freeman is a game that, um, that I really lo- or really enjoyed it, but it's a game that sort of was a, pretty much abandoned, I believe. So uh, I haven't played that one for quite some time. It's like Armour, if you've played the Armour games. It's also, when you're actually playing the games, the the, um, the game itself feels very much like Combat Mission as well. So it's all these different genres that come in, and you've got the first-person shooters as well. It's just really amazing. I guess Armour is a bit like that as well. So it's, um, it's just a really interesting mix, but you've also got this whole strategic layer, which you don't tend to get on a lot of these other games. Uh, so if we have a look at the user interface, so we're starting on the 1st of January 2024 at 12 o'clock. We start off paused. As I say, the game will leap ahead sometimes. When you do something, it will then just start to play. And I sort of wish it wouldn't do that. Uh, back over through here, we've got the stability. So we've got a 43% stability in our in our territory. Uh, we have an authority level of 1%. I don't actually know what most of this does, to be honest. Uh, political power of 91 and a, um, and a dictatorship of 5%. I'm not sure how these are applied in the game. I'm, I'm quite new to the game, actually, but, um, but I love what I'm seeing. So up the top through here, we've got all these different resources. So we've got things like money. And see how it's all seen then split between Faro, Boa Vista, Salermo, and uh, Castello. These are the four cities that we actually have that under our control. And so the money is not just a global resource. If you need to buy something, it has to be at that location. This is like Distant Worlds. There's so many games that this is sort of like in, in different ways. So any resource that you require has to be at that location when you require it. And so we've got money. We've got wheat in through this side as well. Wheat can then be transformed across into bread. Uh, so bread is then sort of, you can see there, we've got a fair bit of bread in around the different places. Um, we've got uh, canned goods in through there. We've got meat as well. Um, we've got alcohol. So you can see a lot of these are only at Faro. Faro is our capital. You can see Faro back over here with the with the star. And so this is the capital in through there. Uh, alcohol, wood, wooden boards. So so timber becomes wooden boards. So essentially that, that's, a, that's an, up, an upgrade. Uh, you've got stone, you've got cloth. Uh, oil becomes fuel ultimately. So oil is very, very important, very expensive, but you can then sort of, uh, you can then refine that into your fuel uh, for your vehicles. Uh, you've got iron, aluminium, copper, and gold. Uh, then you've also got back over here iron ore. So you've got the actual ores in through there to actually then make the usable areas. And so when you build things, you need all these different resources to be able to then go and do it. Uh, if we have a bit of a look at cross at the, uh, at the research, this is one of these things when I click on it and unclick, it's going to then start to run forward. So when I just go back into here, you've got, it, it, it starts off in weapons. So this is the weapon area back in through this side. And so you've got different sorts of weapons. And again, this will be mainly sort of US based because we're playing as one of the democracies. But the RPG uh, 7 in through here, this in, in 20 days, we can then sort of get the, the I guess the, 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 the instructions on how to build these things ourselves in our cities, as long as we've got the right sort of resources. Uh, we can get Remingtons back in through this side. So we can get, get a lot of oldish style weaponry, but slowly over time, we can then start to choose where we go through the tree to get what we need to take on specific enemies, which is really, really quite cool. So let's go, I won't click on that one just yet because once we start researching one thing, that's the end of it. If we go to ammunition, we then actually have the different types of ammunition. We can sort of then try to get the uh, the RPG ammunition, for example. We do actually have, already have ammos for the, um, for the 18 millimeter and 19 millimeter. So nine by 18, nine by 19. So that's what we can currently build, but we can't build a lot of other things. Uh, we've got other things, even like things like it's like police, um, different sorts of sites for our weaponry, uh, different sorts of ammo in through here again as well. I mean, this is this is the ammunition sort of style of things. Uh, we've got militia, yeah, regular spec ops. I'm th- thinking this may be more clothing, uh, vehicles. Back and through here, we can start off with just some some uh, some trucks, and then through to Humvees, into um, yeah M113s, LAVs, um, M1A1s, uh, the Abrams, for example, uh, the M20s. So we can sort of get uh, like this is um, 
big artillery. So eventually we can get there, but we can't do it just yet. We would need to get this one first and then sort of start to open up the various other types of, uh, of units. So these all take like 20 days to do that one there. If we, if we start off with the RPGs, these are quite valuable. So we'll just start that one through there. That way we... we we can do no we can't do that once we actually select one of these we then sort of set with that one so we'll close that one down and it's now it's just starting to run forward again i just had to quickly pause it so that's our research this is our scene through here by the way and this is our flag the sambro democracy uh next one down is production our um production is again at each of the actual locations so faro has two different things it can produce uh Bo Vista has two as well. Salermo and Castello only have one each. Now, if I start to think, okay, look, I wouldn't mind getting some copper ore mined, it will go to, if I just go and, and re remove this one through here, it should just automatically go straight to Bo Vista because this is where we mine copper ore. This is showing me where I can sort of do different things. So Salermo and Castello, I can actually have set up for, um, for farming if I need to do it that way. So if I just go back into actual production, I can go, okay, I want copper ore, it's going to go into Bow Vista. I've still got one more thing I can build at Bow Vista. So it may be, do I want to have like a, um, a colt in through this side, or do I want to have like, you know, I can get ammo like the 18 millimeter or nine, 19 millimeter ammo. Now the colt is a 45. And so I'm not going to be able to, you know, get weapon, uh, uh, like I might be able to get, um, uh, ammo for that one. So I'm better off if I'm going to build any of this stuff, I'm better off going this way and through here. But I'm just going to go and get wheat back at Salermo and also at Castello uh, because that's really all that they can build. And I'll show you why it can only build those things at this point in time. I might get a P350 back and through there and then also then just go and get the 19 and I can then just go and get even more of this as well at Bow Vista. So you can see there that Faro is building military equipment uh, as is Bow Vista. Bow Vista is also mining copper ore, and that's all it can really do at this point in time. So to make that even better, we can then go down to construction and actually improve our city. So there's a whole other veneer in through here. And so when we have a look at this one, through, we've got like a Ministry of Labour. So total people in the Republic is 4,700. Uh, employable people is 2,300. People in production is negative 800. People in construction is negative 239. People in, in ministries is minus 160. And so we end up with basically an operating reserve of 1,000 and a maximum production efficiency of 100% at this point in time. So if we build too much, and we also have to have different things to build stuff. So if we go to Faro and say, okay, well, what can we build in Faro? When I go through here, I can build, for example, things like, at the moment, we can actually, in fact, before we do that, if we just go and have a bit of a look, we've got a military factory there, two military factories, which is why we can build military equipment. We've got a military factory in Bow Vista as well, along with the copper mine. And so if I click on the actual in Bow Vista, we'll get a different sort of things we can actually then go and build. And so from the copper mine, I can still build a bakery. Um, we should be able to then get like a, a copper plant to sort of then create uh, like actual copper bars. So eventually we can start to sort of build up like there's a, a, an oil refinery. We don't actually have oil in this particular map. Um, back, back in Faro, we can again get a bakery. Now we probably do want to get a bakery and we probably... We could probably do that back at Salermo or one of these other places. You can sort of see back and through here. Like this is really rural, so we can actually have, we've got a wheat field. We can get a tobacco fields, um, which will then sort of give us money, essentially. Uh, we've got the farming, so we can get meat, uh, logging plants, sawmills, and stone pits. So we can get these different sorts of basic resources. Um, I'm thinking if we, if, we ha if we choose one of our locations as a bakery, like so Salermo could actually like grow the wheat and then essentially bake it as well so let's go and do this one here so this one requires you see that it requires 3,500 money and uh, 35 boards and 50 stones so do we have that at this location it's showing that we do but I can then just go across to Salermo I might just I'm going to be flipping around a little bit here if I click on Salermo itself and then click on the, uh, we can have a look down through here, we can see that it's got 68 wheat. It's got a lot of food in the in the source of, in, in, in bread, which is what the um, what our forces use to sort of, uh, to uh, uh, to feed themselves. <clears throat> We've got 24 boards and 28 stone, which is the same as if I go up to here and go to stone, I can then sort of see that Salermo has got 28, uh, 28 of stone in through there as well, or wooden boards 
is has got uh, 24. And so we know that we've already got some of what we require at this location. And so this is actually not too bad. So let's make, uh, let's make, this is actually, this is, um, sorry, that's Salermo. Yeah, Salermo is right. Salermo is sort of what we wanted to have. Yeah, so I think I might make this into my bread, like my bakery. And so we've got enough of the raw, raw resources. Now, if I go across to Faro as an example, and then go across to supply, in fact, that's, sorry, there's a few little things to talk about here. <laughs> You've got, if you click on a second time, you then will go to garrison with the supply that is the supply of the actual city itself. And you'll see that we've got all these different reservists, so we've got manpower, we've got cloth, we've got vehicles back and through here as well. So we've got some, we've got some spare vehicles. Uh, we've got RPGs, we've got, um, yeah, different sorts of ammo and through the side as well. So it's, uh, this one is, this is our capital. We've got lots of money, um, wheat, we do have some bread here as well. We've got uh, canned food in through the side as well. Uh, alcohol, which is a resource. Cigarettes is another, which we can then go and sell if we wanted to. So we've got a lot of stuff in here. So so our so Pharaoh, as our capital, has actually got like a lot of material that we can then sort of make use of uh, in through the side. So and it also has like a standing garrison. Now we can get rid of these if we wanted to. Like sometimes these can be get working rid of to then add to your main force. So you can sort of use the forces that are here to then sort of supplement. Now, if I go and click on one of these, it then opens up. I see exactly who's inside there, what they've got. Some of them have got rocket propelled grenades. Uh, some of them have just got shotguns. Um, yeah, some of them have got, you know, different sorts of machine guns and things like this. So we can ultimately, now the game will sort of just put cobble together its own groups as such, but it's uh, but it will always try to pick the best whenever you sort of create like a new squad. So back at Pharaoh, we actually have inside the city quite a bit of stuff already ready to go. Uh, I'll come back and talk about that. I'm still just wanting to go back through the actual construction, but it, you know, there's a lot to like about this game. There's a lot of comp complexity and a lot of detail. Uh, which is which, and, and it's all just coming very, very recently. Anyway, Salermo is going to be a bakery, so we're going to go and grab the bakery from there. Now, that's now got Salermo sort of being done. In fact, that's probably not what I wanted to do, to be honest, because I only build one thing at a time. So we'll start that way anyway. So we'll get Salermo sort of started. I probably should have got something from Faro or Boa Vista. Anyway, that'll do. <laughs> I'm just showing you what the game has actually got. So that way we're then going to be essentially building this one up over the course of 50 days. And that's then going to be supplying food to the rest of our forces. The next thing down is, so that's construction, the next thing down is diplomacy. And so when we have a look at diplomacy, in fact, before we do that, let's go to trading first. So when we go to trading, we have decided through our, through our forces that we're willing to trade uh, a little bit of our wheat and a little bit of our wood. Uh, so we're going to, you know, we're trying to get like six hundred and forty uh, dollars out of this one and four hundred and thirty out of this one through here. Also on the world market, the different factions have also then put some other things up there for people to buy. Now there may be some things in through here. So oil, for example, we can get seventy-five oil from I forget which location this one actually is, but anyway, they are they are selling us oil. They they must have oil, an oil um, derrick or something inside their territory. So the what you actually have inside your territories becomes very, very important for, for the way that you then play the game. There's 35 oil there for 1,900. So everyone's got a little bit up into here that you can then go and get. So it is worth having a bit of a look through to see, see if there's anything there that you do want. I might just grab that oil actually. So we'll go and grab this oil here. We'll just get heaps of it. And so we've also got these, um, we've got a fair bit of money so click to buy, product be, be, be added to your capital at Faro. Um, no, I won't, I won't worry about that one through there. Anyway, so Faro has now built, uh, has now bought the oil. So we've got like, a, it's, not, it's not there yet, but it will, it will be arriving. So the, not, the game actually has a transport system as well. So when we go across, for example, from say Salermo, um, let's just go and transfer some of the things from the supply like if we go across the bread i can then say okay this bread i want to send a bread convoy to go from salermo to faro so let's just go and, and just send some of our bread across so it's going to then send 1400 which is everything we don't want that because it's got a little bit there let's just send a small amount so say about 158 so just a tiny amount to send that one across Ultimately, we'll actually end up having a weekly convoy. So, we'll really repeat the convoy as we start to, to make bread here. 
we'll then actually do this one on a regular basis and we'll then figure out what amounts we need to then go and send. So if we go and send that, there will actually ultimately be from Salermo a truck that will then leave. If I just unpause, we should see it. There it goes. So there's a truck now leaving. You see there's a day-night cycle as well. So it's just going through the little side roads. And so that little truck that we're watching through there is uh, making its way across with the bread across to Faro. So that's actually how that one sort of works as well. So you've got to get resources to where you need them, <laughs> which is quite cool. The next one that we sort of skipped over is diplomacy. And so this one through here, we can see that what our what, it, what we've actually currently got. Now we're at war with the rebels. So we've got like a group of rebels. These are all against us. So these are going to be all the communist type countries. We do actually have like trade agreements with a lot of these as well, where we can actually go and buy and sell our trade goods. Now, when we have a look at this as well, like we can sort of see that Malaga, which is probably the one that we ultimately want to be taking over, if we go and click on that one there, we've got like, a, we've got a trade agreement, we've got a non-aggression pact, we've we've got the ability to actually have that military access through their territory, and we have an alliance, so we probably don't want to take them over so much, really, in this sort of sense, because we can just go through their territory anyway. They're sort of like our brothers in arms. We're not very close with them, though. Uh, the Bud Ro Rodak, we've got trade agreements, so we don't have much with anyone else. Now, the Hollis Bro, in back and through this side, this is a big, big one. It's only plus five. What I might just do is just go and, um, and essentially try to just improve relations. So if I just go and click on that one through there, uh, time to, for the mission to be completed is 30 days. Uh, success chance is 40, 46%. I can send a bribe as well. So I can allocate $500 in bribes to increase the chance of signing a contract or at least to get a result. I don't think I'll bother with that one now, but let's just try to make more friendly maneuvers back out this way. But the, the you can see that the diplomacy system is actually not bad with what it actually does do. You've got like basic things you can then try to sort of... Uh, implement and you've got like it's you know it comes down to your relationship with them as to you know how willing they are to actually uh to trade with you anyway let's get into the meat and potatoes actually not quite the meat and potatoes we've still got a little bit more to go through we've gone all the way around the uh, the outside now of the um of the game itself uh so we've got this is our capital now if we're trying to go and get exact information about our production and and so on and so forth I can just go and click on these which will then bring up my garrison and supply information back in through this side uh, so that sort of is now what's showing in through there the important thing that's showing over through here because this is a really important thing is your manpower and so this is how many people you can sort of recruit at any one point in time at Pharaoh we can get a lot at 266 is a lot of people Boa Vista back in through here we've got um, a little bit of stuff in through there with our supply. We do actually have some weaponry, but not very much. So these aren't really viable in terms of trying to sort of get a, like a, a, a functioning military force up and running from there. Uh, Salermo has got 35 in through there as well. Again, not really much in through there. And Costello back down this way as well has got a fair, like a, a, a fair amount, but again, Nothing much really to, uh, to 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 make anything with. It's just got militia cloth in through there, whereas Pharaoh has got um, and she's got militia cloth there, 82, 82 um, militia clo uh, clothing in through there. So we can get like a fair. We can we can put together a fair amount. We've got a, a, an M one hundred nine and an, an M two seventy as well. Um, hmm. Okay. So what we might do is we might put together. I'll just show you how to create like uh, more units for your actual group so if we go to pharaoh as an actual group now the next thing down through here this is our cities of course and it's got like the little symbol showing that this is an actual city this is a a mining place this is a uh, this is a rural town which has got the different ways of then constructing depending on what they actually are uh, down through here we actually have our battalion so we've got like the fourth the 123rd the 77th and the 69th so if we go to the 69th which is our battalion back over here at faro and we click on that one we then can see the forces that are involved. We've got two, uh, two, two different types of tanks. We've got like an actual tank. By the way, these are NATO symbols if you're not sort of used to how they work. If it's got like a, uh, a cross through it like this, it means infantry. If it's got like a, 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 a track symbol, like this is sort of like if you imagine the track of a, of a tank, then that's what that's referring to. If it's got like a, a diagonal through it, whether it be like whether it's got this track symbol or not, it will mean more scouting. So more sort of like a, a, a um, advanced sort of look at different different types of things. Unfortunately, I don't think the game tells you exactly what sort of weaponry you've got. Um, 
it doesn't specifically say what type of, of equipment that we actually have there. And I'm not good enough at recognising. This is definitely one of our tanks because this symbol is, is the symbol for tanks. This symbol is for scouting units. So this one could be an LAV or something like this. Uh, I don't think it would be a, a, an M113. So if we have a look at this one here, you can see what it does is it sort of shows you like a symbol that like if there's if there's armor in it, it will then sort of show it. If we have a look at this one over through this side, for example, yeah, we've got another tank in through this side, and we've got two. Now these are infantry, mechanized infantry. So these are more your your M113. So these are not going to be all that powerful, but the tank will be. And so we've got like a small smallish group in through this side here at Salermo. We have a reasonable size back in through this side here at um back at the capital, uh, back over this way. What else do we have? Looks like we've got another tank type unit back down this way as well. This is interesting, we've got, we've got like a Jeep. So a Jeep is more of a, of a scouting type vehicle. So we've got like a scouting vehicle, another scouting vehicle back up the top there. These may be Bradleys, I don't think they are, but if they are, then that would be really, really awesome. They're probably the best of the different types of units. We do also have, looks like to be um, artillery back into this side as well. So randomly, out, we've actually ended up with quite a few fairly heavy units. You've got to be very careful because it's so hard to replace when you actually play the game. Uh, back over this side, we can see we've got another seven in through here. Wow, a lot of, a lot of equipment. So I don't, I don't want to be taking all this equipment into the fight that we're going to be going into. Having said that, though, I quite like the idea of these, um, of these artillery units coming back through. So what we might do is we're going to take on this group of rebels. Now, we can see there that the rebels have only got infantry. We can't see exactly what's inside there, but mainly it's going to be infantry. So I think we mainly want to go in with things like artillery and also with, uh, with many infantry, our, infantry ourselves. So with our group that we actually have through here, I'm going to move them off and have them move across, say, into this location here, just at that crossroads. It's going to take them seven hours to move there. Um, this, this one, I mainly want to get, bring this one across. Um, we've got some, these guys here are actually fairly well armed. So I've cobbled together a fairly powerful group. Uh, this is the garrison. If I click a second time, I then get the actual force itself. This is not really all that powerful. Um, I did want to show how to build forces. Like down through here, we've got things, for example, like we can resupply the, the forces. They've got, um, they're carrying a certain amount of canned food and fuel uh, just for their own, like this is their actual supplies. So again, I can just go and, and supply them up uh, if I needed to. I could rearm the battalion, sort of get them to reshuffle their arms a little bit. Uh, we've got create squads, which is what I wanted to show you now. So if I go to create squad, it will then automatically then just go and place a squad in there. But the squad, you can see there, this is actually, when you've got a track with a dot, that does mean artillery. And so this is a specifically an artillery group. If I go and add another squad, it's then going to grab the next vehicle as well. This is also artillery. So we've got two different artillery groups. Maybe we'll actually wait for those to be to be to come good before we sort of send them off. By the way, when you see a number one like this next to it, this means that the first attack group will be comprised of those. Um, let's just go and add one more. We should now. Now we're getting really crappy. Um, uh, it's, this has gone out to level two. We've now got enough for our like to fill the to fill the battle map up. These become reserves for uh, for future. But if all we're going to get essentially is just going to be uh, pistols, I think we'll get rid of those. So we won't worry about those. These ones here also only have like one of ten, so they'll eventually sort of come through. I do want these. I, I do want the artillery, and I do want the mechanized artillery. Now I thought that this one was. No, it's not. These are actually just different different types of tanks. So what we might do is we might actually move, actually I don't really want them in this fight either. So what we'll do is if we just unpause the game and then watch what actually happens here, see how they're picking up people. Now he's already gone and sort of set, sat back over through this side. Um, I will wait for him. So we now got three of 10. And so slowly over time, they will then just go and uh, pick that up. I might just, ditch that one but if there's vehicles available we'll choose the best vehicle it will then go and create a squad based on the best equipment that it can actually cobble together and for us there's not much really it's just pistols <laughs> so we need to get better equipment now we oops hang on we don't want to do that we don't want to do that, Roger that. Roger that. Take cover. i'll just go back there yeah sorry it's um yeah i don't want to delete the battalion Roger. 
you up to six. <clears throat> I'll just let it build up. Another thing you can do is just go and click and just say, okay, um, <clears throat> rearm the battalion. So you can sort of do that as which I don't know, I've already spoken about all this one as well. So you can just click on supply. That's something you're just going to resupply them up so that they're going to have a bit of everything, a bit of alcohol, cigarettes, and things, which will then just make them a bit happier. Just keep on watching this battalion. Up to eight, nine. So I'll just go through the principles again of the different sorts of things you can do here. There we go. We've now got a full squad. I'll just pause this again. I'm now going to come back and now join up with this. See how you've got like a little, almost like a recycle sort of cycling uh, icon. This means that we're going to meet up with them and we're going to do, we're going to redefine who who's going to be fighting and what's going to be actually happening in here. So we've got some pretty good militia forces in through there with good good equipment. Now, we don't know what sort of equipment the AI has got either over here with the Rebels. Now, when we come in, so the 69th Battalion has come in with these guys with their with just pistols, but with the artillery. And I do want to keep that artillery. I'm going to go and move. I'm going to keep that one. I might move this other tank across. I definitely want to bring in another infantry group for this particular fight. And I think we've got a sniper sniper rifle there as well. So we'll bring that one across. So we've got that sort of squad. Um, yeah, we can't see much there. And I think what I'll do is I'll leave the Jeep. I might bring everything else across, actually. So if I just go and accept that, I then end up with a small small group in through this side in here of the 4th Battalion, which is just like literally just a, a uh, recon type, uh, type group. I'm going to move him back. Now, there's still the, back in Bo Vista, we still actually have the garrison like the basic garrison through there. And I can bring the garrisons out and swap, you know, the crappier crappier forces off with them. So let's just go across to the 4th Battalion, Roger. move it, it back. Now, if we go back to the 69th Battalion, um, eventually, if we can click that one, there we go. We can now see that it's going to split up. We're going to go in with uh, with the artillery, a... Um, uh, a scouting a scouting squad in through there, which I'm actually happy enough with. I'm happy with that as well. And then the second group that comes in, if any of these run away, uh, they'll then bring these in. And I can always just go and change this around. Like if I think, okay, look, I wouldn't mind that one going in first. I can then just reorder these to whatever I actually want. So this is really quite cool as well. So it's actually done. Now that we've got this squad selected, we're now going to go and take on the, the Rebels. And this is really where the game does excel. What I might do is, if, I've actually nearly gone for 40 minutes here and just really explaining, I guess, the um, the uh, the st more strategic layer of the game. I think I'll actually pause it here, or actually finish this episode, and uh, then come in with a part B and go through the actual battle itself. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, again, a lot to love about this game, a hell of a lot to love about this game. I'll uh, catch you on the flip side, as they say.